So here we're interested in finding the area between these two trig functions. So we're adding a little bit of variety of types of curves that we'll be um, looking at. So here I want to find the area enclosed by the curves y equals cosine x, y equals sine x, x equals 0, and x equals pi over 2. Um, so it would help for me to identify which of these two curves is the sine 2x curve and which is the cosine x curve. Well, we know that cosine x at 0 is equal to 1, so this blue curve must be cosine x, and this red curve here is our sine of 2x. So I'm going to want to know where are these two curves equal to each other. So I need to find my intersection points, just like we did in that previous example. So find the intersection points. So where is cosine x going to be equal to sine 2x? Well, it seems like this is going to be a little bit tricky to solve. I don't have a cosine x on both sides to cancel or factor out or anything. So here's where um, a trig identity will be useful. So we're going to want to use the trig identity that sine of 2x is equal to 2 sine x cosine x. So we can write this as cosine x equals 2 sine x cosine x, and then subtract cosine x from both sides. So I have 2 sine x cosine x minus cosine x equals 0. And I want to do that instead of dividing by cosine x, because I don't know um, whether cosine x could be 0 or not, and I don't want to be dividing by 0. So now I can factor out the cosine. And we have cosine x times 2 sine x minus 1. So either cosine x is 0 or sine x will be equal to 1 half. Okay. I'm more only interested in finding um, intersection points over the interval from 0 to 2. So I see that cosine will be 0 um, when x is pi over 2. And sine it will be equal to 1 half when x is pi sixth. Okay. So we see that this intersection point here between the two curves must be at pi 6, whereas where they intersect again here is at pi halves. And we're interested in the area here from 0 to pi halves. So we want this part of um, our region here, this sort of more bow tie looking region, because this has the bounds of the red curve. Okay, that's our sine 2x curve, the blue curve, the cosine x curve, and the lines x equals 0 and x equals pi over 2 there. Okay, So what's different about this region than the other cases that we've looked at um, is that I do have a change in what the top curve is over these two different regions. So on region 1, if I call this region 1 and I call this part region 2, on region 1 I can divide this up into these little um, rectangular slices here. My width would still be some delta x, but my height would be equal to the top curve of that first region, which is cosine x, minus the bottom curve of that first region, which is sine 2x. And then over region 2, I still have a width of delta x, but now my height would be equal to that red curve of sine of 2x minus that bottom blue curve of cosine x. So my area in a situation like this where I have a change in terms of what the top curve is or what the bottom curve is over these different regions is going to be made up of sum of multiple integrals. So I'll have the area of that first region is the integral from 0 to pi 6 of cosine x minus sine 2x dx plus the integral over that second region from pi 6 to pi over 2 of sine 2x minus cosine x dx. And then the next step will be for us to evaluate that. So we'll scroll down, have a little bit more room here. So we're going to have to take the antiderivative of each of these two terms. So the antiderivative of cosine x will be sine x, since the derivative of sine x is cosine x, so I have sine x. Then we're going to have our antiderivative of sine of 2x, 
So that should be positive cosine 2x over 2, since the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And when I would take the derivative of cosine 2x, I'd use the train rule to multiply by 2. So when I do the antiderivative, I'm going to divide by that 2. And this will be evaluated from 0 to pi 6. Then I'll have plus, now my um, integral here from pi 6 to pi over 2 of sine 2x minus cosine x. So I'll have the antiderivative of sine 2x. That'll be minus cosine 2x over 2. Again, since the derivative of cosine would be negative sine, that would give me back a positive sign. I'd have to multiply by 2 when taking the derivative. So when I do the antiderivative, I'm going to divide by 2. And I'll have minus sine x here. And this is evaluated from pi 6 to pi over 2. And now we'll have to plug in those bounds. So we'll have sine of pi 6 plus cosine of 2 pi 6, or pi thirds over 2, minus sine 0 plus cosine 0 over 2, plus what happens here for our second part, where I'll have um, negative cosine of 2 pi over 2, or cosine pi here, over 2, minus sine pi over 2, minus what happens when I plug in pi 6. That'll be negative cosine of pi thirds over 2 minus sine pi 6. Okay, so now we just need to remember the exact values of our various trig functions. So sine of pi 6 is 1 half, cosine of pi thirds is also 1 half, so this would be 1 fourth. Sine of 0 is 0, and cosine of 0 is 1, so that'll be minus a half. We know cosine of pi is negative 1. Let's see, this is going to be a plus here. Um, cosine of pi is negative 1, so this will be negative negative 1, or 1 half. Sine of pi over 2, that's 1. We'll have minus a negative here, or plus cosine of pi thirds, which is a half. So divided by 2, we'll have 1 fourth there. And then again, minus a negative, we'll have plus 1 half. So when I do the arithmetic to simplify that, we do get that our final answer here is an area of 1 half.